This is a quick overview of the new features in the upcoming version 7 of Firespitter. The new, the new stuff I've been working on is tweakable engines and whole new engine code. So if you look at the, this engine for instance, uh, it's an electric engine, but it's not just the way you see it now, that's not the only way you can look. If I use this slider, I can increase or decrease the number of blades on the engine. I can increase or decrease the power of the engine. So the max thrust goes up and down. I can say that the blade should be bigger. So in this case, that's really just visual uh, because the engine size is the one thing that uh, sets the power. And I can say how fast it's supposed to rotate. In this case, that's also not very relevant. But um, in the helicopter engines, which I'll show off shortly, that's very relevant. Um, this is also available on the fuel-driven engines. So this is the way this engine looks when you first place it. If I right-click and increase the engine size, it grows, and it adds some more exhaust parts and just visual nonsense like that and I can say okay bigger blades more of them etc and if I create clone it, it's the same way and if it's mirrored it also copies all of these values this all of these tweak tweak walls also make a big difference in the helicopter engine so the helicopter engine the basic idea is that it also uses a new engine module, which basically just works a lot better for atmospheric engines because you have more control over air density and how that affects the thrust of the engine. But in this case, you, you might have seen videos where people put a lot of wings around a rotating hub and create a big helicopter with these slowly rotating wings. And that's cool. And I kind of wanted to to use the same physics inside of a single part. So uh, each of these blades actually has a small piece of wing code on it. So when they rotate, they look at how fast they're rotating, and each blade gives lift based on that. Which means that if um, if you increase the pitch of the blade, you increase the lift. And also, if you have more blades you get more lift. And if they're longer, you get even more lift. And um, if they rotate slower or faster, again, more or less lift. But of course, each blade also creates drag, so you need to have enough engine power to make up for that. So if we check out the, the mass ball over there, moves when I increase and decrease engine size. And the, this tail rotor, or the tail rotor without a fenestron casing, also used these physics. The fenestron can't be tweaked in the same way, but the tail rotor can. So I can say that this should be tail rotor for a big ass helicopter. Now uh, let's look at how this performs in flight. I'll just load up one of these. Uh, as I built them. This electric engine uh, would usually have some issues using the old code, especially some issues that have cropped up later on. But um, this engine code fixes that. And also it separates the concept of uh, starting up the engine and it's spinning up from the concept of your immediate uh, thrust response. So if I start this engine, the RPM is low and it doesn't really give much thrust yet because it has to spin up. I have had to turn off the sound just so it won't mess with the recording. But um, that, if you made that slow an engine response, it would also affect your ability to get instant feedback from your engine. But in this case, that's no longer a problem. So I can cut the thrust immediately. So it goes straight down to zero here, or right back up to 24 
based on throttle setting. But the RPM is maxed out, so it just gives the max power immediately as soon as you increase the throttle. And the same is of course true for, for the liquid fuel driven engines. These don't use the advanced blade physics of the helicopter engine because they really don't need to. Now let's take a look at the, um, at the helicopter stuff because there's some interesting new stuff there, especially stuff uh, like the hover mechanics. I've actually turned on a small input visualizer here, so you can see here. Uh, this is just to demonstrate what keys I'm actually pressing to go up or down. I'm just starting up. It takes a little while to spin up, not not long. Now, now I'm in the default mode where the th uh, throttle setting for the engine uh, decides how much output the engine gives. Actually, actually, it sets the collective of the blades and the the RPM is just constant because it has enough power to keep that going. So whatever the, the throttle setting is, that's collective pitch of the blades. And of course there's cyclic uh, on the blades, so when a blade is on the right or left side it has a different amount of pitch and that allows you to to pitch and roll. And in the same way, the tail rotor yaws because the blades actually rotate like that. Now, uh, controlling the up or down speeds of the vessel can be tiring. So you can turn on the hover mode and just maintain altitude by constantly controlling the collective of the blades. Now to alter the height of your, like the, your hover height, you'd normally have to do action groups and stuff. But I was inspired by the Arma 3 helicopter controls and to go up you just hold shift down when you're in hover mode you release it and it stops going up to go down you press control and it keeps going down i'm just tapping it kind of gently because i don't want too much downward speed because then i might not have enough power to actually recover before i hit the ground as you can see just you just go down a bit by pressing control over here and go up by pressing shift that's all there is to it. Of course, if you turn off hover mode, that uh, you just go back to the old way of doing it. But uh, yeah, it's quite easy to fly around if you have this hover code enabled. It's easy to to like barnstorming and stuff like that. Just carefully. Uh, setting an altitude, so I'm just, oh this is your altitude, I'll just press, quickly press shift just to make it remember that this is the altitude I kind of wanted to end up at. Because when I press shift, when I release it, that tells the hover mechanic that this is my new desired altitude. If I'm going down, I hold control down, the, the point at which I release control is my desired altitude, so it, it'll climb up to wherever I was when I released control. And hopefully, this is as easy a hover, hover code to use as I'm able to make. I, I hope we all, you all find this to be a good system. So um, those, I think, are the, the main features. Uh, when it comes to engines, there's also um, the switchable textures and models. So if you, and this will be implemented in a big way in B9 and some other mod packs as well, but I made a module that lets you have several different variants of the same part without filling up the whole part drawer here. Just click next part variant and it switches to the old slightly uglier tail boom, which is a totally different model, or in this case I can just switch textures. So I want this stripey thing, or green, or red, stuff like that. 
you can also switch the, the contents of it. So instead of having five different fuel tanks for liquid fuel, rocket fuel, electric, structural, and something else, you just have a single part in the parts drawer over here, a multi-tank. Just right click it and choose next tank. Is Now it's liquid fuel, now it's liquid fuel and oxidizer, electric, or just structural. And it also changes the weight of the tank a bit. So when a structural tank is typically slightly lighter than uh, a fuel tank, even though it's empty. So um, all of this stuff is in the current pre-release. There's still a lot of work to do, just you know, minor details here and there, but I think that the main pieces are in place now. So have a look at that and enjoy.